Welcome back, I'm GTGD and this is video 16 where I'm going to make use of post-processing to make the project look a whole lot better. So I'm going to make use of post-processing in both the main menu scene and in the game scene. Uh, so it's very very simple to set up with the universal render pipeline, they really have made it nice and simple. But you do have to make sure that on your main camera under rendering, post-processing is enabled. So just make sure to enable that. The next thing to check is our URP asset. So the renderer asset, you go into that. And at the bottom, there's something there, post-processing. Make sure it's enabled. So with the two enabled, then you can actually make use of post-processing. I'm going to make an empty game object here. Just recenter that. And I'm going to call it like post-processing. And I'm going to copy this over into the game scene as well. I'm going to add a volume component. And we just need to create a new post-processing profile. That profile is going to be added to the scene folder. Uh, but really, you can reuse a profile. It doesn't matter uh, that it's put in this scene folder. That doesn't matter at all. Now, how to add effects? Uh, camera effects basically you're going to add you're going to click add override then you select post processing and a very common one and one that i just basically use uh, all the time is vignette so go ahead and select that and what it does it just uh, well i'll just show you so i'll just select intensity that's what i want to change at the moment if i zoom that up you can see what it's doing. What it does for visually, anyway, for what I feel and what I think anyway, it removes some of that. It helps you focus on the center of the screen. Like it removes some of that harshness around the edge of the screen. Like, you know, your monitor is basically, it's, it's a harsh edge there. So this is kind of just softening. That's just how I imagine it. And something I typically do as well is I, can I can leave it at black, but if I want to to get a bit of a softer effect, I can use like a bluish tone there, and it, it does have a different effect. So if you start increasing the intensity, if you change the color to a lighter blue, you'll notice that difference in it. Now, as for intensity, I like it around like 0.35 or thereabouts, something like that. That's what I typically will use. So it's hardly noticeable, but it is there. It is actually softening along the edges, especially when you maximize it and you see it full screen, you'll notice the effect a lot more. Uh, now, another one that I also use, uh, not all the time. I mean, it also depends what device you're uh, building for. So if you are building for mobile, you have to be a bit careful. You won't use like depth of field and you might not use bloom either uh, you can check for yourself when you use the frame debug how many more frames it adds to uh, create these effects and so it may not be worth it but bloom does look very very nice and that's why a lot of people try to use it including myself so if i put that intensity to one you can already see that there's some nice bright anything with a bit of brightness to it it seems to have a bit of a glow and the more you increase that intensity well the more uh, absurd it becomes so yeah just I'm, I'm just gonna keep it at like one and that's more than enough you can change the tint you can give it a different color so it depends on what sort of a project what sort of environment or what sort of mood you're trying to get uh, with it it's really neat too you can add like a, a dirt texture so on your camera so let's say if like the player is a it's a first person game and the player is wearing some sort of a helmet or something like that you can actually have like represent like dirt on the lens and that way whenever the player looks at a light the dirt will become very obvious it'll sort of glow in the light and it's very very neat so it looks very neat so you can do those sorts of tricks with it uh in that but, but for something as simple as this it doesn't make any sense uh all right another one that uh, it's a bit optional really it's depth of field it can be a bit expensive to run as well this adds a bit of a blur to everything so bloom adds that glow to objects um, to anything that has a bright color and especially anything giving off light will glow a lot more which you'll see in the game scene actually it'll become a lot more there obvious there so for this uh, bokeh looks pretty nice i don't know if i pronounce that correctly by the way uh, and what i need to change is the aperture so it's right now is 5.6 if i reduce that you'll see the scene just suddenly just becomes a blurriness uh, i find about 1.5 is okay there's a very slight softening of slight blur uh in this scene anyway it's up to your camera as well your camera setup affects the effect here 
Uh, in this say, in this setup though, I find that about 1.5 gives me a pretty nice effect. It's very subtle. I mean, I don't like too much blurriness, then it's trouble for me to actually focus on something on the screen. So it can be a bit annoying as well. But at a certain point, there's a balance between annoying and hang on, this actually looks pretty nice. Uh, the next effect that I'm going to go for is color adjustments. This is one that I just typically will always use. Um, whether it's to make thumbnail images like for uh, videos and whatever or thumbnail images to show a project or it's in game as well like I make extensive use of it like in weekend drive for example that's very important to me I put up the saturation it makes the colors a lot more rich and makes it, it makes it more vibrant you, if you go the other way if you go negative you're gonna make a great uh, grayscale game uh, but if you go the this way, then it starts to get richer and richer. You can go too far though. Uh, I think about 20 for me, that's about where I go to. It just adds a bit more, how would I say it, a depth to the color and for it's just pleasing to my eyes. And uh, based on feedback I've gotten so far, I mean, it seems to work for others too that, um, yeah, they don't mind what they're seeing on the screen. Doesn't seem too harsh to them or anything like that. So I think that's all right uh, in that case. So that is the post processing more or less done. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and take it over to our game scene as well. So I'll just go to our scenes, go to game scene paste it in and I need to just turn it on on the camera so as soon as I turn that on you're gonna see the change there you go so if I just turn that off for a moment you can see the dramatic difference it is a dramatic difference like everything seems to just like pop a little bit more if I could say that if I could explain it like that I mean it looks very flat without it everything looks very flat I haven't done anything I just turn on post processing and suddenly uh, it looks a bit richer if I increase the, the scene size so I probably, probably should have just selected maximize on play there uh, but what I'll do is I'll click on that and you can see now the effect of it so it's like what late afternoon or no, no it's correction it's early morning so the sun is rising and you can see the effect perhaps I can dial down the bloom a little bit oh well that was the lamp oh no it makes sense for the lamp just thinking about it and the daylight is coming you can see the bright yellow color you can see a bit of that bloom effect you can see a little bit of blurriness and now the grass actually looks a bit better and actually I think it looks significantly better it's just very interesting what you can do with such simple effects. And they're designed to not take up too much uh, processing power, especially for desktop. For desktop, it's not a big deal at all. But for mobile, yeah, you'd probably have to think about it and think which ones you really need to have. Do you really need to have it in there? Uh, so yeah, your performance is super important. Now, something I do want to change is in my canvas construction. I mean, it's probably been bugging me too long now. I just can't help myself. And I need to go and change what gets highlighted with this blue color. Like if I just hit play, sorry, just one moment. If I hit play, you can see that uh, whenever I hover over these buttons, everything goes blue inside of it. I want to change that. I just want the border to go blue. It just looks so much better like that. So why don't I just do that? Uh, so I'm just going to apply the image border instead. That's what will change color. In my prefab, I'm going to go to the construction button prefab and open it up and uh, just go down here to the coloring bit and just put in the image border. Get back out of here and uh, just save my changes. If I hit play and I just put maximize on play there. So if I hit play and then I'll get to see that it just looks a whole lot better. That is so much better. I don't know why I didn't do it before or rather to begin with. I mean, the effect is just, it actually looks proper now to, in my eyes anyway. So, okay, that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. This was a super sh short video and it was nice and relaxing. It was a nice change for me. Uh, it's, it is good fun playing around with post-processing and the effect the the dramatic difference it can make is worth it and also the universal render pipeline the post processing for that is so simple as you saw I didn't have to play with layers or anything like that which you would had had to do with the built-in render pipeline this is just much easier and so straightforward okay so that's it for this video in the next video we are gonna get on to tile map sorting order and I'm gonna just make a tree in that and you can see how how to make it so that uh, the player can appear behind the tree uh, or in front of the tree based on their uh, Y position in the game. So that's very interesting and a bit of fun as well. So I'll see you then.